Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here on Sammy Taramina, blog around the OA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host between two minutes on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on a local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. A lot to talk about this week here, obviously. the when you look at, of course, we're going to talk a lot of basketball this week. We've had the KLA OA Challenge, um, of course, recapped. Um, it was won by the KLA in both boys and girls basketball, nine to seven in both. So we're going to break that down. Also, we're going to talk about the um, some teams that are rising and some teams that are falling. Uh, there are some trouble right now um, in both boys and girls basketball. Um, let's look at more of the OA side of the um, Lake of the OA Lake Valley Challenge. We're gonna start with girls basketball here. Um, the first team we gotta talk about. I mean, the first um, you know, you look at of course how that re- how the challenge went. Um, both. I mean, you had um, I know Lake Orion, Clarkston, Adams all won their um, both their boys and girls matchups in this challenge. Of course, um, you know, and that's something to really talk about here. Um, also some. Weird upsets, some weird games that really went on. Some games I didn't expect that would be like blowouts and all that. Um, so we're gonna we're, we're we're gonna talk about that as well. Um, let's look at the girls' side of things of the Lakes Valley OA Challenge first. Um, you know, when you look at the, the challenge and how it how it went, um, you knew that you knew that Troy Athens was gonna have a tough against Wayne Memorial, um, and it showed. Um, 70 to 33 was that score. Um, you know, Wayne Memorial is one of the best teams. I think they are the best team in the Kensington Lakes Activity Association right now. The way that they're playing, um, Belleville right in the mix at number two, but Oxford gave him a game. Um, that ended up being 50 to 36. I mean, Allison Huffstetter had 18 points in that one for Oxford. Um, and then you look at, of course, who I think is third best team. You got Heartland Howell. I mean, like Heartland, of course, they know issue with Farmington. Um, it was not close. Farms and they got some problems. I mean, like that that team seriously has got some serious problems. We're gonna break that team down. Um, why I think I am really concerned for Coach Natalie Nolak's team. Um, and then of course there's Plymouth. I mean, like Plymouth's a team that is, I think they're gonna be the most improved team in this conference. Um, you really look at um, you really look at of course they had that battle with Lake Orion. Um, had a nice start against them. Led 14-6 at one point, and then it became back and forth. Um, Lake Orion, um, their resiliency is going to be there. I mean, their resiliency is there. I mean, th- that team is a really resilient group under Coach Bob Bridges, and I think, you know, that's the thing. People look at Lake Orion and say, okay, it's a young team. Um, yeah, they're a young team. I mean, like, they lost nine seniors. Let's not forget that. But still, you have some experience there. You got Izzy Walensky. Lexi Strohshine, um, I mean, like Ryan Pelagic, they have um, district champion. They've won two district championships, um, especially Lexi Strohshine and Ryan. I mean, especially when you look at Ryan Pelagic, um, she's won two of them. Lexi Strohshine's won one. Um, Charlotte Pavlovsky's won one. Um, and then um, you have you have a Nevea Wood, of course. He's been to a district final twice um, with Oxford um, and there's that experience right there. You know what I mean? So Lake Orion, yeah, they're a young group. I mean, but they got a lot of experience. I mean, like, you know, players that battle, played through the battles. Let's not forget Ellie Britt and Charlotte Poplowski also have experience playing multi-sport, of course. Um, Ellie Britt with softball and, and um, golf and um, Charlotte Poplowski with volleyball and also softball. So, you know, so Lake Orion's got a lot of experience. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, when you look at it, but from other sports as well. Um, so they had a nice win against Plymouth. Clarkston, of course, winning that one um, in a in a tight one, 51-48 against Howell. I mean, like, you know, obviously they got get Gabby Pico in the foul trouble, and that was the difference in that game. Um, you know, Eliana Roback at 15 um, to lead the Wolves in a balanced attack. Um, Brooklyn Covert's been playing pretty well for Coach Aaron Good now. Um they're right now clicking on all cylinders right now. Adams coming off that 39-31 win against Northville. Um, Samantha Blaine is really starting to heat up for Adams. Um, you know, obviously, they, they're they a very scrappy group over there for Coach um, Joe Malberg. And Adams right now, the way that they're playing, they're they're right now, um, they're in a good spot right now. I mean, they really are. 
Stony Creek, of course, had um, no issue with Brighton. Of course, Sarah LaPrairie had a big game for the Cougars. Um, but, you know, I mean, it was a tight game with them, Brighton. Um, so it was a good win for them. So when you look at, and then, of course, we know West Blue had no issue with playing with Salem, 67-47. Um, obviously, they took um, their coach, coach's comments in the heart, um, obviously, and they just blew out the Rocks by 40 points. Um, Bloom Bay Hills has a tough loss to um, Plymouth Canton. Um, Groves had a really tough loss to Bloomington Churchill. Seal had a nice win um, as well. Um, Seal was the other team. Honestly, I forgot to mention Seaholm. Um, they also got a win in both girls and boys basketball. So in the KLA OA Challenge. So when you look at who won doubles, um, was um, Seaholm, Adams, Lake Orion, and Clarkson were you know, one doubles this week um, in both boys and girls basketball. So, in the Lakes Valley OA Challenge. So, you know, so when you really look at, you know, when you really look at the challenge, how it went, um, you know, you kind of learned a lot about some teams, but also you kind of learned some teams that, you know, just mind boggle you. I mean, you really look at, obviously, um, the teams that, you know, you really look at, of course, West Bluefield, Lake Orion, um, Clarkston, um, coming off big wins um, in this challenge. But there's some teams that got some concerns. I mean, I mean, we're, we're going to talk girls first. I mean, like, obviously. So, you know, so when the teams that got some concerns, obviously Farmington, um, honestly, they they don't score and they get a lot of points. That's a problem. Um, I know Farmington's a very young group. I mean, they are a very young group. Um, but, you know, I mean, like, honestly, you know, I know it's hard for them to score right now. And that's a big concern, especially when heading to league play where that could be a serious problem. Um, when you look at Farmington's situation, I know that's something that Coach Natalie Nolak's going to have to address is she's going to have to address the issue of... Um, she so have to address the issue of um of um you know of defending obviously and putting up a lot of more points. I mean, like they I mean like yeah, they had twenty six points. Um but you know, you can't be scoring points in single digits, you know, that's not gonna get the job done. And, you know, and I think that's something that Coach Natalie Nowak's gonna have to fix real quick. Um that's a team that I've got some concerns about going forward is Farmington. Um, another team that I think we need to talk about here that has me worried a little bit is Rochester. And the reason why it's simple when you look at Rochester, um, this is a team that sits at one and two. Um, did not look good against Dearborn Fortson. Um, lost 37 to 23. Um, Alice Max had 19 of the 23 points. And to be honest with you, that's not good. I mean, that's not good. Um, you know, obviously, I know Coach Bill Thurston's team really well. Um, and coming in the year, the biggest concern for Coach Thurston was going to be the guards. I mean, you look at, of course, they have players. I mean, they have play, proven players in there. Caitlin Gugliela, she's she's been she's been there with the program. Lucy Cook, we know she's a heck of a track athlete, a cross country athlete. Um, and then, of course, you know, they got a young group. Um, but when you look at the problem that Rochester has is, you know, you're going to have teams that are going to focus their attention on Alice Max, or, in Dearborn Fortson's case, let Max get her points and shut our bells down. That's the problem. You know, obviously, not having Kylie Robinson hurts this team. I mean, now, when Robinson comes back in January... Um, that's going to help some things for them, but it still doesn't address their problem at the guard spot. So when you look at Rochester's situation, it's kind of where, you know, you kind of, it's, it's kind of where, you know, when you have two proven bigs that had, that, that has played really well, but you need to have that solid guard. And you look at, of course, Rochester in the last couple of years, you know, they've had, <laughs> They, I mean, like last year, obviously with the district championship, with the district championship, they had they had a very experienced guard on lineup. I mean, obviously you look at players like a Delaney Norgrove, you got a Natalie Race, um, but they just don't have that. You know, they're a young group, and 
you know, it kind of showed in that game against Dearborn Fortson where, you know, I know Fortson's a big, they got two solid bigs and they did a pretty good job on Max, but you can't, you know what I mean? You got to have a guard who can step up and shoot you and shoot you some baskets in critical situations. And that's the problem that Rochester has right now is it comes down to guard play. And, you know, if you don't have guard play, you're going to be in trouble. I mean, you really look at the teams coming in this year, you know, coming in with some questions about, um, you know, I mean, like there's still some flaws with each team. I mean, you look at what Clarkston size is a big concern for them. You look at, um, you look at Lake Orion. I mean, can they, are they, um, you know, depth's a big question for them. I mean, you look at with West Bloom, I mean, West Bloom, they address their depth situation. Um, so with Rochester, you know, and then there's Oxford, obviously, you know, it's his life, life in the red. So with Rochester, this is a situation for Coach Bill Thurston to get the guard situation figured out. Because if this, because if Rochester can't get the guard situation figured out before heading into league play, this could spell trouble, especially heading in the postseason. You know, when when you look at their district, um, you look at Stony Creek. Of course, Stony Creek we know's got a really good guard in them, Sarah LaPrairie. I mean, Merrick Schwabach's been solid for them, and they got the Avash districts. I mean, you look at and then you look at a team like Adams. Adams is really improving. I mean, you really look at what they've been doing. Um, then you have Utica Eisenhower. Um, Utica Eisenhower is, a, is is questionable for me. I mean, I think they're very questionable. And Romeo, we know they're getting better. Um, so for Rochester, it's just they've got to address the guard situation. Um, you know, they've got to get one of the one of those guards have got to step up and score. And you know, if if they, if they do that, then that's going to take the pressure off Max. It's going to take the pressure off Robinson when she gets back. Um, it's just. It's just finding that guard who can score. I mean, if they do, then it's gonna then it's gonna help them big time. But if they don't, you know, what I mean, then they're gonna have to, they're gonna struggle to score. I mean, they're gonna throw a lot on Alex Max, and you know, I mean, like you know, and it's almost it's almost it would be almost like a similar situation was going on at Oxford with the boys program. I mean, obviously with them relying a lot on Jake Champagne to carry them, you know, and then. You know, and then you got to get help somewhere for you got to get help somewhere. I mean, like that's that's the situation that Coach Bill Thurston's facing right now. Is you know, Alice Max is doing a lot. Um, if she gets into foul trouble, there is some big problems with Rochester. Um, they just got to find a guard who can score. You know what I mean? That's really what it is. I mean, you know, you got defensive stoppers, you got you got everything else, but you just got to find a scoring guard. And I think that's the, that's going to be the key going forward for um. Coach Thurston is, can he find that scoring guard within his roster? And I think that's going to be the key going forward for Rochester is if they can find it, then I think they're going to be fine. But right now, when I'm looking at that team, um, I've just got some serious concerns with the guard situation at Rochester with the way everything's been right now. So, you know, we'll see what happens with Rochester. Um a team we got to talk about it has been a surprise that wasn't in the Lakes Valley OA Challenge was is Ferndale. I mean, Ferndale's off to a nice start. I mean, they're 3-1 and one right now. Um, had a big win against Antoine Simpkins in Detroit Cast Tech, um, 56-53. Um, relying a lot on a lot of young talent on that team. I mean, Coach Keith Paris has done a really nice job. You know, obviously, you look at, of course, last the last few years, Ferndale's you know, they, they haven't been stable. And then when Paris took over that program, um, you saw some signs a little bit. Um, you kind of figured, you know, the direction Ferndale was going to go. Obviously, with Juan Rickman's style of play. Um, obviously, with what he's done with the boys program over there at Ferndale, leading into a Division II state championship. Um, the only concern I have with Rickman's, with that style it comes to program strength because, you know, when you look at Ferndale right now, and I think this is a team that, you know, they got, they got, they got proven players. I mean, like proven experience. Um, now when they played Dexter on Saturday at Belleville, um, they, they kind of struggle when they're from behind a little bit. And I think that is a concern if you're coach Keith Paris is, you know, you're playing a tough schedule. You're playing these teams to get you better. Um, but when you're playing from behind, that could be that is dangerous. And Ferndale did that against Dexter. Um, they end up losing that one 44-38. Um 
I mean, when you look at the Eagles right now, and I think when I look at that division, they're in the in the gold. Um, I think they're going to be. They're obviously the favorite in that division. But when you look at them in the future, I know Rickman's going to try to really look at probably like going up in from like the from like the white, you know, from the gold division to the blue to the white. You know what I mean? Eventually in the red. Do I think Ferndale's a team that's ready to go up the red right now? Probably not, because you got proven programs up there. But I think the thing for Ferndale is they got to address his program strength because. You look at a course, you know, you got to look at a course, and I'm looking at this from a program perspective because you got the talent up on varsity, but it's just developing talent in the JV level, developing it in the freshman level. If they can do that on a consistent basis, then this team's going places. Now, you look at, of course, what Rickman did. I mean, Rickman, obviously, he did bring in some... um, he did bring in some transfers who transferred into district. So, you know, you look at, okay. So, you know, you're looking at, okay. You know, you got the players there, but you're going to have to build the program from from within. The JV, the sub-varsity levels have to be addressed. And I think that's something to really look at. And they've done a good job. They've actually looked at the middle school programs. I mean, like, <laughs> and seeing that, you know, there is talent down there. I think it's going to come down to is, can they build the program to build a JV program? Can they build a freshman program? That's the question I have when I look at Ferndale is in the, in the girls. You know, you look at, of course, a team like Avondale. Avondale, you know, they're trying to build their, their programs back. You know, they got a JV program right now. Um, <coughs> but, um, you know, when you look at Ferndale, obviously, this is a team that, you know, right now is they're, they're starting to turn the corner a little bit. I mean, like, they've got, I mean, like, they got that win against Detroit Cast Tech. Obviously, they're a well-coached team. Of course, they're coached by former Groves coach Antoine Simpkins. I know him very, very well. Um, obviously, with, um, you know, that that's big when you go into Detroit Cast Tech and win. You know, obviously, Detroit Cast Tech's had a lot of success. Um, and I know this is the first year for Coach Simpkins um, in that program. Um, but for Ferndale to go in there and win, that that says a lot to where, um, you know, especially where this team's been, this program's been. I mean, they had some really, really down years. And, you know, for them to go to Detroit Cast Tech and win, that could be a program um, building win for them. And, you know, and then when you look at it going forward, there's no doubt in my mind, I think Ferndale is going to be the favorite in the um, in the gold. Um you know, when you look at the teams under Oak Park, you look at Pontiac. Pontiac, I think Pontiac's much better than people give them credit for. I think they're much better um, the way that that team's been playing. Um, and then you look at um, Ferndale U. I mean, like Ferndale U, they've been up and down. Um, and then, of course, you know, you have Avondale. I mean, Avondale, of course, coming off that very tough loss to Dearborn um, where they just, which they just, you know, this they just wore it out in the second half. I mean, like they had a big injury. Um, which was really unfortunate for Coach Roy Christman and his team. Um, but right now, when I look at that division, Avondale's clearly the team right now in that division to really, really watch for. Uh, actually, Ferndale is. Um, but Avondale right now, I'd say right now will be two. Um, I would say Pontiac is three. Then it's um Oak Park, and then uh, actually then Ferndale U, then Oak Park. I mean, like, you know, so really that's what I'm looking at right now. So when you look at, Ferndale's path, their district's brutal because they got to go through Detroit Country Day. And Birmingham Detroit Country Day just destroyed Harper Woods. Um, and it wasn't close. So for Coach Paris, it's just now you got to really start focusing on Detroit Country Day. <laughs> and I think, and I know they keep an eye on them. So, you know, but, you know, seriously, that's the team I would really want to keep a real close eye on if your Coach Keith Paris is. Burby and Detroit Country Day because they're in your district. If you're going to want to have success, you have to go through them. Um, and that's probably the only team that I would really be focused on from Coach Paris. Um, you got a nice young group, nice young nucleus. But honestly, when you look at Ferndale, um, do I are they ready to go up a division right now? Are they ready to go up two or maybe three divisions? Probably not. 
I think for them, it just takes it one at a time. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see. But if you win division titles, you should move up a division. So that's just my take on it. You know, so we'll see what happens with Ferndale going forward there. Um, you know, when you look at the divisions right now, um, in the blue right now, I mean, like, I do look at with Southfield. I still can't trust Southfield defensively. Um, I, I just can't trust them defensively with the way that that team is built. Um, <clears throat> until I see defensive improvement, I can't trust Southfield. I really can't. Um, Adams is starting to trust a little bit because when you look at Coach Joe Malberg, he's been on our podcast. Um, Faith Zolas, I don't know if she's played or not, but um, but Samantha Blaine, Layla Tomzak, um, they're a very scrappy group right now. I really like the direction that Coach Joe malberg has got that team going. Um, it'll be very interesting to see how Adams does going forward. I think Adams right now, the way that they're playing, um, I really think that the sky's the limit for Coach Joe Malberg and his team over there at Adams, um, really with the way that team is built. So using a lot, they were very young last year, got another year of experience. Um, so it's kind of a good stretch for, for Coach Malberg, especially with Adams, um, you know, going on the way up. And I think that's going to help them going forward with them. We've already talked Farmington. Um, North Farmington's a team that I, North Farmington, they're in the white. We'll talk to them in a minute. Um, Troy. Um, it's hard for me to explain Troy because you don't know what you're going to get from him. And, you know, you have a moment where Diamond Prince goes off for 31, and then she struggles. There's a time they look good against Orchard Lake St. Mary's, and then and then they play Novi, you lose by 17. So you don't know what you're going to get with Coach Laura Guzman's team. Now, they got experience. Don't get me wrong. I mean, a lot of those girls last year played fr played last year, were freshmen last year. On varsity. So when you look at success, I mean, like, it's been, I know they're still pretty young. I mean, you look at Carly Higginbottom um, in the interior. You look at, of course, Allie Mantuza um, in the interior. You know, you look at, of course, obviously Diamond Prince. You look at, you know, Sylvia Casverse. Um, there's a lot of options for Coach um, Laura Guzman. But it's just, it, for them, it's minor mindset. That's really where I think the issue is with Troy is you got to, you got to say, okay, what's it going to take to win? You know what I mean? You know, I know they have it in them. They've won a game already once this year, but they played Romeo. They played Orchard Lake St. Mary's, played Novi. I mean, those three teams are solid teams. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Romeo's solid. I mean, they've been battle tested. I mean, they've been battle tested, but... Right now, when I look at Troy, it just comes down to mental mindset with them. Um, and I think that's something to really, really watch for when you look at Troy is watch their mental mindset, their mental psyche. That's going to be the question for Coach Laura Guzman. Um, you know, obviously, that's a big question for them um, to really watch for. Troy Athens, um, you know, we talked about that game against Wayne. Um, it was going to be tough. And... Um, but I've got concerns with Troy Athens right now. Um, that that team is struggling. I mean, that team is really, really struggling right now. And that's something for Coach Stacey Klump to address is the struggle. And I think that's something to really, really watch for is, you know, I think that's a team to watch is Troy Athens is how are they going to respond um, after um, handling adversity? That's the big question I have for Coach Stacey Klump is can this team bounce back? And, you know, right now they're struggling. They are really, really struggling right now. Um, and then there's Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley's a team that I really think with the Bears, they're up and down. I mean, I mean, like, you know, they had that one-point loss to Mass Nice Bitch Foley. Had a nice win against Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. Had that win against Utica, Utica Eisenhower, which was huge. Um, so when you really look at the Bears and Coach Clay Shaver's team, um... I really like where they're at right now. I mean, Mavi no one's been playing good. This should be a three and one team right now. But, you know, had not been for that loss to Mass Nice Bishop Foley, 
Um, honestly, this is a team that should be, you know, you know, three and one. That's just my honesty when I look at Berkeley. But all everything all points out to that game coming up with Royal Oak. And I think that's gonna be the game that I'm gonna really keep an eye on, you know, when you look at that uh, matchup. And I think that's this week. So that'll be really interesting between the um, Ravens and the Bears to see where Berkeley's at. Um, is we're gonna see where they're at. I mean, Royal Oak, we know, is off to a really good start. I mean, like, so we're gonna talk, um, obviously, Royal Oak in a minute here, but Berkeley right now, I like where they're at right now. Um, do I, w I think the record should have been better. I mean, they should be a three and one team. They sit two and two. Um, big test coming up with Royal Oak this week, so. But I like where Coach Clay Shaver and his team's been going. So lots to really like when you look at the Bears um, going forward there. So when I look at the blue right now in this order, I still would say Southfield barely. But I think Adams is there. Troy's there despite the record. Berkeley's there. Um, and then it's Troy, Athens, and Farmington. So when you really look at the blue right now, I think between Adams, Troy, and... Um, between Adams, Troy, and Berkeley, um, I think those three teams right now are, you know, a little bit behind, but not real much. Because with Southfield, obviously, the, they have the offense, but the defense still scares me with A&T. Um, so, really, when you look at that division, that's how I'm looking at it right now. Um, white division here, obviously. Um, you know, Royal Oak right now, I still think, you know, they've been battle-tested at that big one against Lavonia Stevenson. Um... Experience matters. I mean, Lucy Freytag's been really good for them. Um, they, they've been playing some really good ball. I mean, like, you know, Coach Brian Zapata's team, and I think experience matters with that team, um, with the way that that team's been playing. Um, Seahome, I've been impressed with them. I mean, they've really started to improve. I mean, Addie Flynn's been starting to turn things around a little bit. I mean, their schedule's been tough. Um, had that loss to Celine. Um, early in the, I mean, earlier in the year. Um, but I really like, I like where Coach Chris Manchester's team's at right now. Um, North Farmington, I can't really judge this team right now because when you look at North Farmington, um, you know they, their not conference hasn't been great. We'll know a lot about them when they play Adams. I mean, like, and I think obviously when you look at that matchup, um, you know, when I look at. Um, Coach Michael Allen's team, I mean, they got proven experience. I mean, like, Asiya Jihad has really played well for them. Um, Hannah Hart's had her moments. Anaya Bowers is really, you know, starting to get get grooving with her game a little bit. Um, I really think when you look at North Farmington, though, I think the game you got to really judge them is either going to be the Adams game or it's going to be the Lake Orion game because I think that's where you're going to really, really judge where the, high, where the um, Raiders are at. Um, going forward when you look at North Farmington um, going forward there. Bloomfield the Hills, they just can't seem to catch a break. I mean, like, when you look at the Blackhawks, um, very competitive in their losses. I mean, like, you know, Stony Creek, then the Plymouth Canton. <laughs> and, um, you know, they, they just can't catch a break. And, you know, obviously when you look at, they got a good team. I mean, they got a really good team. Ashley Fortner, Brianna Young, um, Ruby Smith. They just, they just seem to can't, they just can't catch a break. And I think, you know, when you look at it here, you know, they're going to have to find a way to break through. And, you know, obviously, you know, you look at that district, that district was winnable. Um, but, you know, when you look at the division, it looks winnable as well. I mean, you still got to play Royal Oak. You got Seaholm in there. Um, but obviously... For Bloopia Hill, they've got to find a way to get a break. I mean, if they can get a break here here and there, that's going to be huge for them going forward. And I think that's something to really, really watch for Bloopia Hills. Is they're, they're right there. They're right there. And they just seem to can't catch a break. And, you know, that's something to really watch for going forward with them. Um, and then you have Harper Woods. I mean, Harper Woods had that bad loss against Birmingham Detroit Country Day. They're rolling until that game. Um... We'll see what type of tea they're made out of because they got an interesting schedule coming up. So, you know, Harper Woods, I mean, like, that's a team to really, really watch for there in that division. So when I look at the white right now, I would have to say um, Royal Oak's my top team right now. Um, then I would say Seaholm. Um, even over um, 
then I would say I'm North Farmington, barely. But actually, I would have Bloomby Hills over North Farmington right now. I mean, North Farmington, I just can't judge them right now, despite the start, you know, that they're having. Um, you know, then it's Harper Woods. Um, you know, and then, um, so when I look at that division right now, I think it's Royal Oaks division still to lose right now. Then it's Seaholm. Then, um, then Bloomfield Hills. Then I'm Harper Woods. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there, um, in that division. Um, and then let's go to the red. Um, obviously we already talked, um, Rochester, my concerns, um, Lake Orion about the resiliency. I mean, that's a resilient group over there at Lake Orion. Um, West Bloomfield rolling, of course, they're 2-0. and Had that win against Plymouth Salem. And then, of course, against some Butler Prep, where they won 59-41 over at Belleville. Um, so they're off to a 2-0 start. Um, same as Lake Orion, they're off to a 2 0 start. Um, Oxford has been battle-tested despite the schedule. I mean, they had that nice win against um, Warren Regina and then had that tough loss to Belleville. Um, they're around 500 right now. Um, Rochester, we've already talked about them, one and two. Clarkson's off to a nice start. Um, good win against Howell. I mean, like, um, you know, when you look at Coach Aaron Goodnow's team, the play of Brooklyn Covert, um, Emily Valencia had nine points. And then, of course, Eliana Roback leading that, leading the charge, had 15 points in that game against the Highlanders. What they did against Gabby Pico was get her into foul trouble. And that up being the difference in that game, um, was Pico's foul trouble. Um, so... <laughs> When I look at the red right now, I would have to say, I would say West Bloomby right now is the top team at division. Then it's Lake Orion, Clarkston, Stony Creek, Rochester, and Oxford in that order right now. And I think that's what I'm looking at right now um, this week. So everything could change. So we'll see what happens going forward um, in that division. So that's something to really, really watch for. So that's my take on girls basketball right now. Let's go to the boys' side. Um, we talked about the um, KLA-OA crossover, of course. Um, you know, the um, challenge, of course, that was won by the KLA 9-7. Um, <laughs> the difference in that game was, um, the difference being was, um, you know, there were some games that were just some stunners. Um, you know, some games I didn't expect what were blowouts. Um, obviously, Clarkson knocking off Brighton was huge. Lake Orion over Plymouth. Um, you know, West Bloomington over Churchill, Troy over Novi, um, um, Seaholm over Livonia Franklin, um, oh no, Seaholm over West, I mean, over Livonia Franklin, um, so, when you, and then Oxford over Plymouth Salem, that was huge as well, so, some good wins for the league, even Adams over Northville, that was a good win for the league as well, um, <laughs> but, when you look at, of course, some losses, obviously, some blowout losses, some mind-boggling losses, too. I mean, like, you look at Deer... I mean, like, Rochester played better against Dearborn, um, losing 57-48. Southfield did not look very good in their game. Um, Groves had that tough overtime loss to Plymouth Canton. Um, and then it, Berkeley, you know, without Owen Stone, who was out due to family emergency, struggled against Heartland. The team I was really stunned to hear was Troy Athens against Howell because... I didn't expect Troy Athens to um, just get destroyed like they did. 77 to 35. I mean, that was mind boggling. Just mind boggling how the Red Hawks played in that game and how, I mean, especially with Coach, what Coach Dave Scott's been doing. I mean, really improved group. Um, you know, they had some good wins. They had, a, they had some good wins early in the year, had that tough loss to Redford Thurston. But against how? what happened to Coach Dave Scott's team? I mean, like, that came out of nowhere. I mean, Howell had some struggles last year. I mean, but they did have that upset win against, I think that was Hartland had that upset win against Holly. Um, but what happened to Coach Dave Scott's team? What happened? I mean, it was stunning to see what happened in that game. I mean, it really was. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, that that was stunning to me was that, that score. A&T is a mess right now. They are struggling. I mean, a and in a lot of trouble right now. I mean, they really are. I mean, <laughs> and that's being honest. I think A&T, they got some issues. They got to address some things. Um, 
So, you know, that's my take on the MOA KLA challenge. Um, obviously, Rochester coming off some tough a tough loss. Um, some good wins for the league. Obviously, we mentioned that earlier. So let's look at let's look at the um, league re- let's look at the league right now where I where it stands. Um, let's go now. It's let's go to the blue first here. Um, Pontiac, of course, a tough loss to um, Westland John Glenn. Um, you know, they had a really tough loss, but I like where Coach Andrew Myers has been. I really like where that team is at. They're competitive. Um, JJ Claudio's had a nice start for Coach Andrew Myers and his team. Um, I think they're clicking at the right time right now. They really are. I mean, they're clicking, and that's a good sign for them going forward. <clears throat> Ferndale U, um, when I look at them, um, two and three had that tough loss um, earlier in the week. Um, I think Coach Josh Nix has got that team figured out a little bit, which is good for them going forward. Um, and then let's look at, um, you know, we, and then let's look at um, Royal Oak is probably the one I was just mostly baffled by because that score was 72 to 34. I'm going like, wow, what happened to this team? This is the same team that knocked off Seaholm. It's the same team that knocked off Bloomfield Hills. Two teams in the white. And you go play Lavonia Stevenson. Now, albeit Lavonia Stevenson did beat Farmington. But to only put 34 up against that team, that's a concern for me. That is a big concern for me. And if I'm Coach Aaron Smith, you're going to say, well, you got to let this game go and move on? They have to. But let's, re- let's remember this. When Royal Oak lost... They're, when they lost to Lake Orion in January of this year, they did not look, they did not look, um, you know, they, they really did not look, you know, they, they weren't the same team after that Lake Orion. They really weren't. And they struggled. I mean, they had some wins in there, but they really struggled. So if you're Coach Aaron Smith, you got to say, look, we're fine. We're not, don't press the panic button. Because if you do, you're in trouble. You're honestly in big trouble. So that's something to really, really watch for if you're um coach um if you're coach Aaron Smith is you gotta keep an eye on the kids mental psyche because they could say, Oh boy, here we go again. And that's something to really, really address. That could be a big concern for them going forward. If they don't, um, you know, it's gonna be how they respond. That's the big question when you look at Royal Oak. Big, big question there. Um and then Let's look at um, Berkeley. We talked them and their loss to Heartland. Um, they were they were without Owen Stone with a family emergency. Um, hopefully he's back. Um, you know, um, obviously when you look at the Bears, um, much different team without Owen Stone. And I think you know it's shown that game against Heartland. Um, so if you're Coach Joe Sermo, you got it's, it's how you respond. So really curious to see. I mean, he had that win against Troy, but. You know, he kind of really been slipping a little bit. I mean, so that's a big concern I have with them going forward. Um, so that's something to really watch for there. Um, Avondale. I mean, when you look at Avondale right now with the way that team is, um, you look at, of course, they didn't, they were blown out by Dearborn, um, had that loss to Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, they're struggling a little bit. And I think that's something that coming in, you knew it was going to be tough for Coach Jared Thomas and the Yellow Jackets. Um, something to really address is you got to really, you got to look at what Avondale is, you know, they, you know, they got to get some wins under their belt, some confidence. Um, (laughs) if they can get confidence under their belts, then I think this is a team that's going to be fine. But when you look at, you know, you're playing these tough teams, you know, sometimes you're just not ready for them. I mean, like, and then sometimes, you know, there's some teams out there. You just got to tip your ball cap to, you know what I mean? So when you look at Abbeydale, um, it's a team to really address is, you know, you really got to see what happens with them. And that's a team that I've got some concerns with going forward. And I think it's a team that, you know, I got to address. And we'll see what happens with Abbeydale. We will see what happens with them. Um, you know, but it's something to really, really watch for with them. So we'll see. 
Rochester, you know, a tough loss to Dearborn. I think they're getting better. Um, they're going to be fine. Um, they've got to they got to get everybody clicking on the same page. If they do. This is a good basketball team, but right now they're struggling. I mean, they're really, really struggling right now. And I think that's something to really address is they've got to struggle. I mean, they're struggling right now. That's really what it is. Stony Creek. Um, there's no words. They're struggling. I mean, they are struggling right now. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is with that team. I just don't know. They just haven't been able to put it together. I mean, the record indicates it. The numbers prove it. Um, they, I mean, like, they're struggling right now. That's honesty right there. And then with Oxford, um, big win against Plymouth Salem. Starting to click, which is good. <laughs> so when I look at Oxford, when they get balance, they win games. If Champagne puts 28 up, fine. But they got to get balance. They got to get balance. I mean, and they've got some balance in the game against Salem, which is huge. If they get balance, it's going to make Coach Joe Fatorik's team that much more dangerous. That's going to make Fed's team more dangerous. And right now, when I look at this division right now, if I had to say right now, in the blue right now, who my best team in the division is right now, you think I may be crazy, but I think Oxford's the best team in this division. Because I think Oxford, the way that they're playing with Jake Champagne, if they can get scoring from Luke Stofan, they can get scoring from, well, Katie Brothers. I mean, there's others on that team. They get scoring elsewhere besides Champagne. That is a dangerous team over there on Oxford Road. That is a very dangerous team over there. And I think when I look at the division right now, who I, if I have to say who the best team in the division is right now, and I'm not being mean to Avondale, not being mean to Royal Oak or Berkeley, but I think the team on Oxford Road, Oxford and Ray Rhodes are the best team right now, and that's the Oxford Wildcats. I think Oxford's the best team right now. Then it's, then I would say it's Avenue. Then Berkeley. Then Royal Oak. You know, until, I mean, like, you know, Ber Royal Oak coming up that, that terrible loss to Livoni Seeps. I mean, you, get, you don't get blown up by 30 points. Almost by 40 points. They got blown up by 38. And that's a concern. And then you have, um, you know, so when I look at that division right now, um, it's going to come down to is, it'll be very interesting, but right now when I look at that division, the best team in that division right now is Oxford. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, let's go to the white now. I mean, Troy, obviously to me, is the best team in that division. Just with the way that that team's been playing. I mean, Troy, I mean, they had a tough two-point win against Novi. Um, they're clicking on all cylinders right now. Um, but then who is the second best team in that division? I mean, Harper Woods has not looked very good. I mean, at, wait, leave not, despite the win against Moopy Hills. I mean, Harper Woods is, I've got concerns with Harper Woods. Bloomfield Hills, um, is a team that, Bloomby Hills worries me a little bit. I mean, like, well, Bloomby Hills, actually, I think they're playing better. I really do. Um, but when you look at, but back to blue a little bit here, a minute here, my best teams right now, I would say Oxford, I will say Oxford right now, then it is, um, Avondale, then Berkeley, Royal Oak, Stony Creek, Rochester, and then Ferndale U right now, that's the, um, division in order right now, um, I would say, um, but back to white now. Um, I think when you look at the white right now, um, mentioned Troy's obviously the best team in that division. Harper Woods is solid. Troy Athens, I'm curious to see how they respond going forward. Seaholm, you know, they're up and down. Um, had that win against them. Um, had that win the other night. I mean, 40-39. They're a scrappy group. Um, Troy Athens, I'm curious to see how they respond. After that loss to Howell, where they were just completely blitzkrieged. Um, Lake Orion's off to a three-game winning streak. Um, just knocked off Plymouth, 51-47. Played a back-to-back, -back, which had wins against Farmington and um, and now Plymouth. They also knocked off Holly as well. So, it was a good week for Coach Jose Andradas and the Dragons. Um, but they sit 5-2 and two right now. 
Um, and then you got Bloopy Hills. I think they're playing better despite the record. Um, and then of course you have um, we talked Troy Athens, we talked Sea Home, um, Harper Woods. I've got some concerns with them. Um, defensively is a big concern. So when I look at the white right now, um, really addressing this division, Troy's obviously the best team in this division. I mean, Harper Woods coming in the air was projected to finish two, but <laughs> right now I would have to say, you know, right now, I think Troy Athens and Lake Orion right now are pretty much even Steven right now because you don't know what you're going to get with need with both those two teams. Seaholm's another one you don't you don't expect what to get. I think Farmington's a much more improved team than what they've been showing. Greg Grace has been playing really good basketball for Coach um, Byron Johnson. Um, and then Bloomfield Hills, I think they're much better than people think. So when I look at this division right now, I would say right now, if I had to do the division right now, I probably would say Troy's obviously the top team. Then I would say right now, Right now, I would put Troy Athens over Lake Orion right now based on, of course, the, um, you know, when you look at um, proven experience on that side, then I put Lake Orion. Harper Woods right now is a solid four. Um, Seaholm's C- fist right now. Um, Seaholm's fist. Um, Bloomfield Hills and Farmington are like your classic 6-7. Um... So when I look at this division right now, um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this division stands out. But it's clear to me right now, Troy is the best team in this division just with how everything has been. You know, the way that they've been playing. Obviously, you got Mason Parker, John Whiteside, and um, Chase Kuyper. The big three scoring a ton of points right now. Um, so when I look at this division here, um, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how this division is going forward. So we'll see how that one goes. So the white, still not an easy division, but we'll see what happens going forward. I mean, a lot of competitiveness in that division right now um, in the um, white division. Um, and then let's go to the red. Um, obviously, North Farmington knocked off Detroit Martin, knocked off Zealand West, 66-57. Um, Raiders right now are clicking on all cylinders right now. Um... And then there's Ferndale. Ferndale's off to a nice start. Um, you know, they had that win against Groves. Um, Groves is coming off a tough lock, tough loss. West Bloomfield's also coming off a tough loss to Warren Lincoln at Waterford Mott. I haven't heard anything about Oak Park. Um, you know, so I'm curious to see where Oak Park is when you look at the standings. Um, and I think that's something to really, really watch for is how have they been doing. Clarkson had that bounce back after... You know, they had a split week against, um, they had a split week, but, um, they had that loss to, um, North Farmington, um, Adams, we know they've been, they're undefeated right now. They're off to a good start. Um, so when I look at the red division and, you know, when you look at this division and I think when you look at, it's clearly the division is North Farmington Salute because the way that that team is built. You know, Landon Williams, Tyler Spratt. Um, you know, they got Dylan Smith in the interior. Um, really, when you look at North Farmington, you know, you look at Media Day, you know, when they had that. I remember Coach Todd Negotian releasing his um, packet. And he, when he, when I looked at the standings and I said to myself, there's no way that the North Farmington project could finish fourth. There's no way. Because... You're really looking at you're really looking at and say like you're gonna give credit to where credit you're gonna you're gonna really say that your team is the fourth best team in your division when you know people in the media know that you're lying and North Farmington's off to a nice start because of the players you know obviously what they have but also you know coaching's involved in this as well and that's the credit coach Todd Negoshi the way that that team is they're off to a nice start they're off to a really good start. And they found ways to win games where they weren't favored. They found ways to be um, to um, be competitive. And look where they're at right now. It's in real nice right now. Um, so they're right now off to a nice start. Adams, we know they're off to a nice start. And I mentioned 
Trent Lagarge looks like he might be that big that Adams might be looking for. I mean, obviously that Peter Kardashian and William G. I mean, Car G only had three points um, in their last game. He only had three points. Kardashian had a nice game for them. But Lagarge, if he's that big for Adams, you know, that they're looking for, that's huge. Because that's going to give Adams a third option. <laughs> and the question coming into the year for Coach Isaiah Novak was going to be, who was that big going to be? Can they find a third score besides Kardashians and G? That was a big question coming in the year. And it looks like they have a Lagarge. So when you look at Adams right now, they're clicking on all cylinders because of the size. I mean, if they find that if they find that proven big, you know what I mean? Then I'll tell you what, Adams is going to go places. They really are. Oak Park, I don't know much. Because, you know, I don't know if they played against Warren Michigan Collegiate or not at Water Vermont. Um, I know they had I know Warren Michigan Collegiate had to forfeit a game last week. I'm not sure why. Um, but I don't know what happened. So we'll see what happened. Um, you know, so that's something to really watch for there. Um, but Oak Park, prior to that, knocked out Macomb Dakota. They're out to a good start. Um so that's a team to really watch for. West Bloomfield came off a really tough loss to Warren Lincoln on Sunday at um at Water Vermont. Um, you know they played a back to back, obviously knocking winning seventy one to sixty, where they were trailing by eleven points at one point. Um, so for Coach Arnett Jordan, um, team sitting around five hundred right now. Actually, you're under five hundred. I think they're two and three right now. Um, that's kind of a concern for them. Um, that's something to really watch for with West Bloomfield is can they, you know, turn the corner? That's the big question for the Lakers. Um, it looks like they're starting to turn things around a little bit. So that's something to really watch for with them. Um, when you really look at, and then of course you got Groves who's coming off a really tough loss to, um, Plymouth Canton. Um, they did get Josh Shifton back, which is big. Um, I think, you know, for Groves, they're going to be fine. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see what Groves has um, going forward. But getting Simpson back is big for them. Um, so we'll see what happens with them going forward there. And then there is Clarkston. Um, when you look at the Wolves, um, they had that split week that lost to North Farmington. And then, of course, the um, win against Brighton, which was huge at the time for them. Of course, you know, obviously Peyton Fitzsimmons. Um, you got... Um, you got um, you got Jonah Lundberg. Um, um, you got um, you know they got they got others who can score as well. Cole Charter's been solid for them. Um, so when you look at Clarkston, um, you know they they're gonna have to grind out games. They're gonna have to, and then obviously that's not talking John Call either. So for Clarkston, it's just grinding out games. They're gonna have to be grinders this year, and. You know, I'm curious to see how Clarkson responds in this division. Um, obviously, when you look at their program strength, being very good every year. Um, so it's something to really watch for for Coach Tim Wasilek's team. Um, is can they? Is can they find that? Um, you know, they've been competitive, but to get back in the thick of it, it'll be something to really watch for. Going forward is something to really watch for Clarkston is can they find that balance? I mean, like, and especially against the Reds. So we'll see what happens going forward there. And then there's Ferndale. Obviously, Ferndale, um, off to that um two and one start. Fretton Ruth, we talked about him. Um, <coughs> you know, I mean, like Ethan Vineyard, um, he's had a nice nice start for for the Eagles and always the only freshman this year. They got a lot of freshmen on that team. Um but they still have, you know, they still have that championship pedigree over there. When he went to Division II State Championship, like Ferndale did, um, you're going to have, but also, you know, and I know Coach Rickman knows this, is he's going to have that tough transition period, and it's going to have to happen during the year. So when you really look at Ferndale, um, the Eagles are going to be a team to really watch for, and I think they're going to be fine. Um but I think with Ferndale, it's just going to come down to is can um, you know, is can they sustain it? You know, can they, 
you know, can they sustain? That's going to be the big question going forward for the Eagles in this division. So it's something to really watch for with Ferndale going forward there. So when I look at the red right now, um, I would say Ferndale, I'd say um, North Farmington's the best team right now. Ferndale's probably number two. I got Adams three. Um, I would say West Bloomfield four, Oak Park five. Um, and then, um, and then of course you have, um, I have Clarkson right now, six. And then, um, but we'll see. Everything can change. I mean, like in this division, I mean, like it's a really interesting division right now. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward, um, into this division. So we'll see what happens. Um, before I, and when you look at, of course, the top 20, um, the top 23 this week in both boys and girls basketball, you look at, of course, how everything's been. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I still don't have an update from Oak Park's game against um, War Michigan Collegiate. But when you look at the rankings this week, it pretty much makes sense where everybody's at. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens where everybody's at. I know we got a lot of tournaments coming up. We're going to talk about the um, round ball classic coming up next week. Also, we're going to talk about the um, girls' basketball. I mean, the Motor City Round Ball Classics at Ferndale and also at Romulus coming up. Um, a lot of holiday tournaments coming up after Christmas. Um, so really a lot to talk about um, going forward as we head into the um, final two episodes of 2023. We've got this episode here this week, and then, of course, we have the um, episode next week. You know, that will wrap up 2023 before we get into um, the class, before we get into 2024. So... Really a lot to talk about. We're in holiday season. Um, you know, we're in the heart of basketball season right now. So really something to really look at as we head forward. Um, we'll see what happens going forward. Remember right, to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw 84650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. Um, make sure you follow, of course, the stats and everything like that. So all right, I'm signing off here. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Take care and see you then. God bless all. God bless everyone.